I'm Randall Funston with Van Bortle Aircraft, and this is the Cessna Turbo 182. This is a 2012 Cessna Turbo 182, also known as the Skylane. They were first introduced in 1956, took a short break in the mid 80s, and then were reintroduced in 1996 and are still produced today. Although it looks very similar to the Cessna 172, it has better performance and a roomier interior. This particular airplane has the very capable Garmin 1000 avionics suite and is also equipped with air conditioning. In this video, we're going to talk to one of their pilots about the aircraft and then take it up in the air for a flight. Unfortunately, my tail camera failed to record, so we don't have that video. This Turbo 182 is for sale from Van Bortel Aircraft where they have a 60-day full refund policy if you aren't satisfied with the airplane. So let's talk to Randall and learn more about this airplane. I guess I developed my passion for aviation flying with my dad when I was a kid, you know, as a family, and that's where it all started, and I just, I just grew to love it, and I never gave it up, so. I started flying around 2003, and then got my private in 04, and then over the years, um, you know, started doing more advanced ratings, CFI, I, MEI, ATP, things like that, and I've always enjoyed learning more and more about aviation, and, um, you know, it just, it's a continuous process, so I love it. Um, I sell airplanes for Van Bortle Aircraft. Um, we're a large Cessna dealer here in Arlington, Texas in the DFW area. We specialize in uh, new generation Cessnas, 172s, 182s, 206s, uh, the TTX, and uh, you know we do some caravans and things like that as well. Yeah, I mean, it, it stays pretty consistent for us. You know, most of our customers are owner flown airplanes, so they fly them themselves. So, um, you know, even economically speaking, it's just a very consistent market for us. Um, you know, those guys, they still want to fly their airplanes. So, you know, you have some, you know, retired owners that, you know, fly throughout their retirement. And then you have uh, customers that use it for personal use and their business travel, whether they be a, you know, a, a business owner or a, a lawyer or a physician or anything like that, going to different practices. We have a lot of customers you know, like that. So I've done some deliveries, yeah, depending on location and things like that. We have a team of uh, contract pilots that do the majority of our deliveries. Most of my flying around here is going to be maintenance flight tests, um, some customer demos, things like that. Most of our deliveries are domestic here in, in the United States. And then we have a, um, a facility here where we'll containerize the airplane and ship it overseas as well. Um, worldwide. But it's really the customer's preference on how soon they want the airplane. If they want to, you know, they wait six weeks, we can ship it. Otherwise, if they want it a little bit quicker, we can have it flown. This is a 2012 Turbo 182. It's equipped with G1000, GFC 700 Autopilot, WAS, air conditioning, ADS-B in and out, synthetic vision. Uh, normally, you know, down low or I guess average altitudes, eight to 10,000 feet, you'll see 150 knots or so true on the turbos. Um, most of my flying, I'll, you know, if the winds are favorable, I'll go up to 12 where I don't put oxygen on. Or if you have a really good tailwind, the service ceiling is 20,000 feet, built in oxygen. You can go up to 17, 18,000 or whatever, get a great tailwind. And, um, you know, at 17,000, you're true and right up between 168 and 172 or so, depending on how you're loaded. And uh, you add the tailwind on that, you know, you're moving. You know, the turbocharged airplanes, they do have built-in oxygen and prop heat and things like that. They've come a long way since the vintage airplanes from the 70s and 80s um, with the Lycoming TIO 540, it's the AK-1A. Um, you have an automatic wastegate versus back in the day, you know, you had to really watch the manifold pressure that you don't overboost it. And these, it's essentially, it's almost impossible to overboost the engine. Um, it makes it a lot more user-friendly, and especially for more inexperienced pilots. Within six to 8,000 feet, there's maybe a five knot difference in speed. Starting to climb above 8,000 feet, that's where you start seeing a higher true airspeed. Um, you still have full manifold pressure and other advantages of the turbo. Uh, you know, if you live in Colorado or higher density altitude airports, the performance is fantastic there. Higher density altitude airports, the turbo is great for that. Um, hot, humid days, it, it helps performance there as well. The turbos normally have a useful load of about 1,020 pounds. So now the 182 carries as much fuel as the 206, burns less. So you have a lot of um, options you can do there. You can, you know, put two people in it, fill it all the way up and fly for, you know, over five hours with reserves. Or, you know, you can leave some fuel behind, you know, have three hours of endurance or so and, you know, have a full airplane with people on bags. It's, it's, it's just a great utility airplane. Um, you know, the, there's a lot of preferences between the high wing and low wing. The, you know, the high wing is great because, you know, I have a friend of mine that flies Angel Flight missions and 
it's very easy to get inside the airplane versus getting up on the wing and sitting down in it. You know, he might be dealing with elderly or maybe disabled people and things like that. So it's great for that. Um, visibility outside, you can see the ground if you want to take photos, things like that without a wing under you. Um, it's, a, it's a great sunshade, keeps the sun out of your face. The 2012 is, is going to be less money in maintenance. Um, you know, it's a newer airplane. You don't have quite as many things breaking as a vintage aircraft. Um, so the great thing about the 182 as well is anybody can work on it. You know, the airplane's been around since 1956. It's tried and true. People have seen it for a long time. If you're going to a smaller area, a smaller airport, and you know, you have an issue or anything like that, pretty much any mechanic can work on it and take care of it for you. Van Bertel is based here in Arlington, Texas. Uh, you can reach us at 1-800-SKYHAWK or you can email us at acsales at Okay, great. Uh, well, you ready to go fly this thing? Yeah, then? yeah definitely. Let's go. All right. Go ahead with you. With the interview over, it was time to pull the airplane out and go fly. I like how these have like real, and these are like the little airbags in here, right? Those are inflatable seat belts, yeah, yeah. and safe. That's pretty cool. I think that's what most people went in accidents is, you know, old airplanes didn't have shoulder harnesses and boom, and you go straight in there. Clear. This is the Garmin 1000. This is the G1000. Terrain system test okay. Is it, it has the, does it have a, a synthetic vision? Or it, is does. It, not, it does. It does. Once it actually it takes a second to capture the GPS location and all that stuff, which we just got, terrain is checking right now. Then. Okay, I'm up here shortly. Arlington ground, Skyline 9043 Golf Charlie on Alpha 1, like the taxi the active for a south departure. Skyhawk 943 Golf Charlie Arlington Ground. Good morning, runway 34 taxi via taxi via Alpha. Taxi 34 via Alpha for 3 Golf Charlie. This is, a 182 is wider than a 172? It is. Oh, it's actually was, closer to a 206. Uh, it feels wider in here than a. Than and yourself rubbing shoulders as yeah, much and yeah. things like that. Yeah, it's nice and roomy up here. Well, the new 172s, how fast are they? 120 knots. Yeah, and this is 150, so you're getting another 30 knots. Right. Like That's I said a big, before, up high, I mean, you, you can see 170, yeah. 175. That's a big difference. Uh, you know, going from 120 to 150, it doesn't sound like a lot, but if you're doing a cross country, you know, and you're doing three hours, well, you've, you've taken off 45 minutes on a three hour flight. Right. And gallons per nautical mile, it's actually not even a huge difference. You yeah. burn a little more fuel with the 182, but you get this. Yeah. But if you pull the power back and you want to fly around at 120 knots, yeah. I mean, you, you can be back to 11 gallons an hour or so. Yeah. But yeah. uh, that's, you know, that's a. I've, a lot of people debate that. They say, oh, you know, it's, uh, yeah, but I'm only burning eight gallons an hour. You're burning 12 gallons an hour. Like, yeah, but I'm 30 knots faster than you. Right. You know, do the math, it adds yeah. up. But that's nice. It has the, uh, you know, graphical engine monitor on there and everything. Yep, so it's all your EGT, CHTs, your TIT. We'll lean to the TIT being a turbo. Arlington Tower, Skyline 9043, Golf Charlie, ready to go runway 34, we'll do a southwest departure. Cessna 943, Golf Charlie, Arlington Tower, runway 34, clear for takeoff, left turn out approved, depart to heaven, Archer, two mile final. Clear for takeoff 34, left turn out approved for three, Golf Charlie. Cessna 576, you can descend at your discretion, you're going to be number two, following an Archer, two mile final on the VOR report, him in sight, about an altitude 1,700. Who's there, Roger? Short field takeoff. Sure. Performance is uh, yeah. pretty incredible. We can demonstrate that. Ready? Oh, yeah, it throws you back. 576, I've got the archer inside. Test 576, runway 34, clear to land number two. Yeah, that didn't take a whole lot of runway. Down a thousand feet a minute, eight hundred. Not feet. bad, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Accelerate to VY and get the flaps up. Right. Yeah, we're still only doing seventy knots. Yeah, imagine like speed up to VY, you go a little better, you know. Twelve hundred feet a minute, pretty good. Thirty-one inches of manifold pressure. There you go. Very nice. What is your typical uh, demo flight that's coming to look at one of these look like? Yep. 
we'll load the customer up. We'll just fly out to the south here, demonstrate, you know, things they want to see, do some landings, stuff like that. Show the navigational equipment, autopilot, demonstrate how all that works. And say about, you know, 45 minutes or so, maybe an hour. Not bad, we're already accelerating through 142 knots true at 2,500 feet. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So yeah, 145 knots uh, true airspeed, but we're still low at 2,500 feet. Yeah. We're doing, uh, uh, right. Across the ground, 144. I'm saying your, uh, your fuel flow. Oh, right now we are at uh, 17 gallons 18. an hour. Right, we're down low, I mean. Yep. You get up to uh, 16 or 6,000 feet, we, you know, three or four gallons an hour. Sure. Uh, eight, five, six, and, and take up a little speed. more speed. Go for just that little bit extra. That's comfortable, yeah. it really is. And if you look in the back, I mean, there's almost more leg room in the back seat than there is up front. That yeah, is a lot of leg room. Yeah, it's kind of nice. You got the ADSB, so you're picking up all the other airplanes uh -huh. out here. Yeah, you can view it here, just clicking over to the traffic page. Right. Yeah. We got one guy behind us, 100 feet above us. Uh -huh. Yeah, the GFC 700 autopilot, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, that's what they're putting in the jets. I mean, it's um, little autopilot, you have flight level change, you can just help the pitch for a certain airspeed, up down, vertical navigation, boss. Yeah, so it's, it's all, I mean, you can, you know, set, you, you know, if you want a typical, if you want 500 feet a minute in your descent, you can uh, go to top of descent alert and everything. And you can, follow it yep. So yeah, I can actually set a point at a waypoint if they say, Cross Monza at or maintain 7,000. I can put in 7,000 feet next to Monza on the flight plan, and uh, you know, as you, as the nose drops, your ground speed picks up. It'll automatically adjust your uh, rate of descent by feet per minute automatically. It'll yeah. land you right at that point perfectly. So, cool. So your uh, cruise settings on this normally? Um, you know, you can fly 28 inches, 2400 RPM. Um, you know, keep the CHTs and sorry, the TIT between 1575 and 1600 or so. That'll give you about 17 gallons an hour, or, you know, you can bring it back to, hey, if you want to do 24 inches or 25 inches and 2400 RPM, I'll put you around 14 gallons an hour or so. That's about 150 knots through and 160 uh, across the ground. Not bad. Yeah, not bad. I'm 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 not bad. So just for the viewers, uh, what he's going to do now is show us a stall. We're going to do a power-off stall? Yeah, we'll do a power-off. Okay, power-off stall. So he basically brings the power back. And uh, let the airplane slow down until it basically the airflow over the wing kind of separates and the airplane falls. And uh, we should recover pretty quickly on this airplane. You know, a lot of people get pretty scared of that, but you know that's one of the first things you practice when you're uh, you know learning your private license. Uh, Actually, this airplane, there's really nothing to it. Yeah, very docile. We're in 70 knots. There's the warning. 160 knots, or 60 knots. There's a little break. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's a lot, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, by the time you get to the point of a stall, Oh, you should know it's coming, and if it does, ha I mean, if it catches you, you know you're, you're not paying attention or something. Uh, they're really easy to recover from. Sure, and it, you know even from the point where the stall warning came on to the actual break. I mean, you oh. even had some time in between there as well. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. And as you very awful, you had a little bit dip right there, and that yeah. was really it. Easy recovery. And yeah. Arlington Tower, Skylane 9043, Golf Charlie. We're out over Eastside with the weather in Meadowland. Strong 953 Golf Charlie Arlington Tower. Continue straight in runway 34, altimeters 3038. Straight in runway 34, 3 Golf Charlie. The glide slope on it and everything? Yep. Yep. Little increased situational awareness, I guess. It's even got the, uh, like a little uh, FPV flight path vector on there. That's part of the synthetic vision. Yeah, yeah. shows where you're going. And of yeah. course, you have the flight director, so, right. which makes it great in your instrument training. Just pair the two bars up, and if you have the program correctly, right. We're going to be where you want to be. Henson 3, Golf Charlie, runway 34, cleared to land, wind 360 at 6. Clear to land 34, 3, Golf Charlie. Clear to land 
Arlington Tower, nine five Archer, nine five three Golf, holding short runway three four, BFR departure to the southwest. Archer, nine five three Golf, Arlington Tower, hold short runway three four, landing traffic. Holding short three four. Nine five three Golf. You'll see it lands. You'll see it lands extremely short as well if you oh, like. Yeah. We'll yeah. easily make that first taxiway. All right. Well, about 65 or so. Over the fence at 65 and then. Oh yeah. Yeah, if you wanted to, you could slam it on and just... Oh, you still can. You're not going to hit the brakes that hard. Yep. Pretty nice. Going to have uh, sound on that one. That was great. No, that was good. Perfect. Yeah, well, nicely done, sir. Thank you so much for taking me up. Yeah, thanks for coming. Well, Randall, thank you so much. No problem. Thanks for coming out. Come back anytime. We'll yeah. do it again. Yeah, I'd love to do it again. Uh, so it's VanBortleAircraft.com or what's the website? VanBortle.com. VanBortle.com. And uh, contact him if you're looking to buy one of these. He'd be happy to help you out. Well, thanks for watching another episode of Flying Doodles. Really uh, a treat you to fly one of these. A pretty cool airplane, very modern. So uh, please click that like button and subscribe. And if you'd like for me to come fly in your airplane and film that, it's Bobby at SailingDoodles.com. It's our patrons for making that possible. Thank you guys so much. We couldn't do it without you.